Just entering the throne uh, room Business now at St. James's Palace. Part two We're going to listen of the in. Council. Your Majesty, to make your declaration. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my most sorrowful duty to announce to you the death of my beloved mother, the Queen. I know how deeply you, the entire nation, and I think I may say the whole world, sympathise with me in the irreparable loss we've all suffered. It is the greatest consolation to me to know of the sympathy expressed by so many to my sister and brothers, and that such overwhelming affection and support should be extended to our whole family in our loss. To all of us as a family, as to this kingdom and the wider family of nations of which it is a part, my mother gave an example of lifelong love and of selfless service. My mother's reign was unequaled in its duration, its dedication and its devotion. Even as we grieve, we give thanks for this most faithful life. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance and of the duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty which have now passed to me. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set in upholding constitutional government and to seek the peace, harmony and prosperity of the peoples of these islands and of the Commonwealth realms and territories throughout the world. In this purpose, I know that I shall be upheld by the affection and loyalty of the peoples whose sovereign I have been called upon to be, and that in the discharge of these duties, I will be guided by the counsel of their elected parliaments. In all this, I am profoundly encouraged by the constant support of my beloved wife. I take this opportunity to confirm my willingness and intention to continue the tradition of surrendering the hereditary revenues, including the Crown Estate, to my government for the benefit of all in return for the sovereign grant, which supports my official duties as head of state and head of nation. And in carrying out the heavy task that has been laid upon me, and to which I now dedicate what remains to me of my life, I pray for the guidance and help of Almighty God. I have with humble duty to crave Your Majesty's permission for the publication of your gracious speech. Approved. Concerning the security of the Church of Scotland, I understand that the law requires that I should, at my accession to the Crown, take and subscribe the oath relating to the security of the Church of Scotland. I am ready to do so at this first opportunity. I, Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of my other realms and territories, King, Defender of the Faith, do faithfully promise and swear that I shall inviolably maintain and preserve the settlement of the true Protestant religion, as established by the laws made in Scotland in prosecution of the claim of right, and particularly by an act intituled an act for securing the Protestant religion and Presbyterian Church government, and by the acts passed in the Parliament of both kingdoms, 
for union of the two kingdoms, together with the government, worship, discipline, rights and privileges of the Church of Scotland. So help me God. I now invite Your Majesty to subscribe both copies of the instrument, confirming the oath has been taken. And King Charles taking that oath there, and uh, it is necessary due to the country's division of powers between church and state has been done by every sovereign at their ascension since George I in 1714. I now invite the witnesses to His Majesty's oath to sign both copies of the instrument. <coughs> Yep. And what we're witnessing now are uh, members of the royal family and privy councillors, councillors uh, witnessing uh, King Charles making that oath. They're signing two identical documents, one that will be sent to the court of session, another preserved in the privy council register. Uh, Philip Turrell, take us through a little bit of uh, what we're seeing at the moment. Well, all the witnesses are coming forward. We've seen members of the uh, royal family there. That's Nicholas Sturgeon, the First Minister of Scotland, who uh, is signing. Uh, you've noticed Prince Andrew. The first two uh, were Prince William and Camilla, the, the Queen Consort, as she is now called. Um, and you're right, this is the second part of this uh, ceremony uh, today at the Accession Council. Uh, and. Prince Charles has made a very short speech, pretty similar, in fact, to the one that he made to the nation yesterday in his first speech as King of uh, the United Kingdom, uh, paying a very long tribute to his mother and 
uh, also uh, to the public for all their support and uh, saying how much that he understands uh, their grief because he is uh, experiencing uh, the same grief, of course, himself, and uh, thanking his wife, uh, Camilla, for all the support she has shown him. So uh, this is the king also underlining a couple of other very important issues that he understands the responsibility of what has landed on his shoulders there will be a before when he was prince of wales and prince charles and Draft now that he is king he is council, now more authorizing your majesty's let's, let's declaration again to, to the, be made to public council. approved draft of an order in council for recording the oath relating to the security of the church of scotland to be transmitted to the Court of Session, to be recorded in the books of Sederant, and afterwards lodged in the State Papers of Scotland and in the Council Register. Approved. Draft order in Council determining the form of proclamation for proclaiming Your Majesty in the realms and in the British Overseas Territories. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the Lord Chancellor to make use of the Great Seal for sealing all things whatsoever that pass the Great Seal until another Great Seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the Lord Privy Seal, if need be, to make use of the existing Privy Seal until another Privy Seal is prepared and authorised. Approved. Drafts of three orders in Council, authorising Your Majesty's Principal Secretaries of State, the Lord Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, to use the existing seals until other seals be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council, authorising Your Majesty's Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, to make use of the existing Great Seal of Northern Ireland until another seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising Your Majesty's First Minister of Scotland to make use of the Great Seal of Scotland until another Great Seal of Scotland be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising Your Majesty's First Minister of Wales to make use of the existing Welsh seal until another Welsh seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the public seals authorising the respective pub public seals lately in use elsewhere than in the United Kingdom to be made use of until new seals be prepared and their use duly authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council confirming Your Majesty's wishes in relation to the Sovereign Grant Act 2011 to continue the tradition of surrendering the hereditary revenues, including the Crown Estate, to your government for the benefit of all. In return for the Sovereign Grant, which supports your official duties as head of state and head of nation. Approved. Drafts of two proclamations. One, appointing the day of Her Late Majesty's state funeral as a bank holiday in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Two, appointing the day of Her Late Majesty's state funeral as a bank holiday in Scotland and of two orders in council directing the Lord Chancellor to affix the Great Seal to the proclamations. Approved. I now invite Your Majesty to sign both proclamations.
And that, Your Majesty, concludes today's business for the Council. May I now invite the deputation party and the witnesses to the oath to exit via the picture gallery and the matted hall. I now ask privy councillors present to exit via the picture gallery and the matted hall and invite you to sign the proclamation, which is laid out in the lower corridor. Thank you all for attending today. And again, this uh, historic day as uh, Charles III officially proclaimed King uh, of the United Kingdom 